Jeb Blount advises many of the world's leading organizations and their executives on the impact of emotional intelligence and interpersonal skills on sales leadership, customer experience, and strategic account management. He speaks to and delivers training to high-performing sales teams and leaders across the globe. He was recently named one of the most 50 influential sales and marketing leaders and is a best-selling author of six books, including People by You, The Real Secret to What Matters Most in Business, and the book People Follow You, The Real Secret to What Matters Most in Leadership. As a business leader, Jeb has more than 25 years of experience with Fortune 500, SMBs, and startups. Today, Jeb serves as CEO of Sales Gravy. Under Jeb's leadership, Sales Gravy has become a global leader in sales enablement solutions, including sales recruitment and staffing, sales onboarding automation, custom sales training program development and delivery, and sales coaching. Sales Gravy's flagship website, salesgravy.com, is the online sales employment niche leader in market share and the most visited sales-specific website on the planet. Over to you, Jeb. Last year, I sat down for lunch at a conference where I was speaking. Across from me was the CEO of a small software company having a heated conversation with another gentleman. The CEO was frustrated that his salespeople didn't have enough opportunities in their pipelines. No matter what we do, we just can't seem to produce enough leads to make our sales number, he complained. And I've been pushing until I'm blue in the face, but nothing ever changes. We're always behind. Now, my mom has warned me my entire life to stay out of other people's business, but I couldn't help myself. So I interjected. What strategies is your sales team using to open more doors, I asked. Annoyed that I'd interrupted, he replied flatly, everything. So I asked, like what? He glared back at me again and said, I have an entire marketing team that's supposed to be generating leads. They're mostly using inbound marketing, PR, and social channels. So I responded that it sounds like you've got a solid focus on marketing. So what are your salespeople doing to reach out to prospects and create their own opportunities? With that, he rolled his eyes. Are you talking about cold calling? Well, not exactly, I replied. Since you're doing inbound marketing, you're probably collecting contact information from potential customers, and you're storing that in your database. You've also got a good handle on your target market, so your salespeople know which companies to call. So if you're not able to generate enough leads via inbound marketing to keep your salespeople busy, why not have them get on the phones and start calling and sending emails to initiate contact? Look, he said, nobody cold calls anymore. It's old school and a waste of time. Now, I'll admit I was incredulous. You mean you'd rather have your salespeople sitting around twiddling their thumbs and wasting time and money than have them make targeted calls to prospects that you know need your services? That doesn't make any sense. How is waiting around for your prospects to contact you working out for you now? At that, he shot me a screw you look, replied that prospecting like that just doesn't work anymore, and then he picked up his lunch and walked away. As I watched him walk away, I knew he would never make his number because rather than facing the real truth that he did not have enough money or resources to produce a sustainable stream of inbound leads, and the only way to keep his pipeline full would be to reach out and touch prospects directly, he whined and complained and looked for magic fairy dust to solve his pipeline problems. And my take from the entire conversation is that I should pay more attention to my mom because sometimes you just can't fix stupid. It seems these days that everywhere you look, there's some so-called expert pontificating that cold calling is dead. And this is usually an inbound marketing, sales 2.0, social selling obsessed nitwit with an agenda and a vested interest in convincing you that everything that you thought you knew about sales prospecting is old school, except for their narrow version of new school. Now, by vested interest, I mean they've got something they want to sell you that they promise will fill your sales pipeline with no fuss, no muss, no rejection, and little effort. These folks have mastered the art of pandering to salespeople who are afraid of prospecting. You've seen the ads in the headlines, never cold call again. They're plastered everywhere. You just buy their system and you'll be set free of the burden of reaching out and touching prospective customers. With their top secret system, you'll happily and painlessly blog and post on social media sites. And then prospects who are already 70% of the way through the sales process will call you at exactly the right time. You'll answer the phone or check your email or social inbox, and boom, you'll have a closed deal. It's easy. 
So why work hard? Why face potential of rejection? Why, when with their little magic pill, you can just sit back, kick back, relax, and wait for your prospects to contact you? Likewise, there are the experts who build themselves as cold calling queens and kings. They preach that cold calling is the real key to prospecting success and offer top secret formulas that they say will eliminate rejection, cause your targeted prospects to swoon when you call, and guarantee your success. It feels like the sales profession's twisted version of a Shakespearean play. To cold call or not to cold call? I say, give me a break. First off, None of these experts can even give a solid definition of what a cold call really is. Just a couple of weeks ago, I asked one of the experts who'd been writing that cold calling is dead for his definition of cold calling. He responded that cold calling is calling off a list. So I asked, what kind of list? Any list, he replied. And then he tried to change the subject to how salespeople should be focusing all of their attention on LinkedIn. Keeping him on track, I asked. Well, what if it was a list of highly qualified prospects that were in the buying window? Would that make it a cold call? He shuffled his feet and blurted out, most salespeople don't have lists like that. And then he quickly walked away. Frankly, most of these so-called experts seem to think that salespeople are just aimlessly cold calling from random lists. And this could not be further from the truth. Although many salespeople may not be effectively targeting calls, very few salespeople are sitting in their offices calling random numbers out of the proverbial phone book. I know this to be true because in the golden age of CRM, almost every company has developed a database of potential customers. And at a minimum, in the case of startups, they can at least point to their target market. Salespeople in most companies are provided a database when they're given a territory, and that database contains prospects that either buy, have the potential to buy, or a reason to buy the company's products or services. The salesperson's primary objective is to qualify those prospects for decision makers, buying windows, and to quantify the extent of the opportunity. Now, the good news is that some or most of that initial qualification can be gleaned from online research and social media channels. The salesperson's role is to contact those prospects to test and refine assumptions about the information they've gathered and to set appointments with the most qualified prospects to move them into the sales pipeline. Likewise, salespeople are following up on leads that are generated from advertising and inbound marketing from prospects that are interested in learning about their services. Some of these prospects are ready to buy and some are just looking. Some move directly into the pipe while others become future opportunities. Information about these qualified prospects is entered into the CRM, which in turn builds an even deeper targeted database. And finally, most CRMs also include data on inactive customers. And these are customers who may have purchased in the past, but are not purchasing now. Some of my clients have hundreds or thousands of these records. The net result is the vast majority of salespeople are not cold calling randomly. Now, the traditional definition of a cold call is approaching a complete stranger or a business for which you have no information and the attempt to sell them something or to get them to set an appointment with you. These strangers don't know you or your company, and you don't know them. Before there was an internet, CRMs, or social media, it was common for salespeople to do real cold calls because it was much harder, expensive, and labor-intensive to get information. In fact, cold calling back then was the internet search of today. That's how you got information. And likewise, conferences, trade shows, churches, civic clubs, and business networking events were the social selling of the day. It was a way to connect, like, and build familiarity. Now, today, in our age of transparency, where information is ubiquitous and we can find out anything about anyone at any time, frankly, no one is a stranger. We can connect, interact, engage, and build familiarity with a click swipe or alike. Our CRMs are jammed full of pre-vetted prospects that have a high probability of needing, wanting, and buying our product or service. With awesome BI plugins like KiteDesk and InsideView, the universe gets even bigger and sales professionals and their companies are able to build even more targeted prospecting lists and suck a massive amount of information about contacts and prospects directly into their CRMs. This is why, with a few exceptions like walking into a new business that is just opening and attempting to make an early contact, that there are no more strangers. 
So the gurus and thought leaders rage on over whether to cold call or not to cold call. And in their bluster, they and the salespeople they pander to have labeled virtually any outbound prospecting touch a cold call. For example, earlier this year, I was working with a group of insurance agents from one of the most well-known companies in the industry. They were tasked with calling a list of clients they were already doing business with, and their objective was simple. Set an appointment with the client to review their coverages and ensure there were no gaps. The goal of the appointment was to find opportunities to cross-sell additional products. Now, this was a low-impact call to a current client, and the approach was simple. Hi, Roger. This is Jeb from XYZ Agency. The reason I'm calling is in reviewing your current coverages, I noticed that you have your cars and home insured with us, but we don't have an umbrella liability policy. I'm calling because I'd like to set up a short meeting with you to review your current situation to identify any coverage gaps that could create a risk for you and your family. How about Thursday morning at 11 a.m.? Simple and easy. Yet the agents had come up with every excuse in the book for not making the calls. One even complained to me that he didn't sign up for cold calling. I politely explained that calling a current client, someone who is already doing business with you, familiar with you, and the most likely of all prospects to take your call, was about as far from cold calling as Perth, Australia is from New York City. All of this to cold call or not to cold call BS is really just an inane argument that is mostly centered on how to avoid ever having to make an outbound call to a prospect again. This is why I'm going to let you in on the truth, the real truth that all these experts continue to ignore in their pitch about how they'll make it easy. And it has nothing to do with cold calling. Here's the deal. If you want sustained success in your sales career, if you want to maximize your income, then you've got to interrupt prospects. You'll have to pick up the phone, walk in the door, send an email, send a text message, or ping a prospect on LinkedIn, Twitter, Google+, or Facebook. And this action is going to interrupt someone who is not expecting you to contact them. You can argue the degrees, warm, hot, cold, or whatever, but it won't change the fact that you will have to interrupt someone to make your number. This is what gets missed in all this useless noise about how cold calling is dead. All of the talking heads who promise an easy way out if you'll just join their little cult ignore the real reason that prospecting is so hard. No matter how you choose to do it, prospecting has never been about the degree of the call, cold, warm, or hot. It has always been about the willingness on the part of the salesperson to interrupt. Which, by the way, is why the sales reps, like the ones working for the CEO in the opening story, protest so loudly and will do anything to avoid making an outbound call. They're just afraid to make the call, not a cold call. But today, most people, including the experts and the insurance agent, have no idea what a cold call really is. They think that any outbound call, visit, or email is a cold call. What has happened is they've turned their fear and anxiety that they feel about interrupting prospects into a boogeyman and relabeled it cold calling. And this has provided the perfect excuse to sit back and wait for prospects to interrupt them and of course complain about not having enough leads. It's not the cold call that's hard, it's the interrupting. Interrupting your prospect's day is a fundamental building block of a robust sales pipeline. The highest earning salespeople interrupt relentlessly and without apology because they know that no matter how you approach prospecting, telephone, email, social, text, or knocking on doors, if you don't interrupt, your pipeline will be empty. And the number one reason for failure in sales is an empty pipe. <laughs>